Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2024 Kia EV9 long range all wheel drive in the GT line trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 285-45 hand cooked tires wrapped around 21 inch alloy wheels with gloss black wheel covers. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Ocean Blue. And the sun is shining, so hopefully you can get an idea of what it looks like. Looking really nice. Uh, so here in the front, it is gloss black accents here uh, with the active grill shutters that open and close when cooling is needed right in here. Parking sensors, there's also a center camera right in the very middle, integrated nicely. There's also a radar adaptive cruise control sensor right in here. I really like that kind of brushed aluminum look to the badging here on the front. Now it has a, like a multiple, multiple projector headlight system. Really interesting. I have a full night video on this vehicle uh, showing you uh, the accent lights here and the headlights. Also, it has these little subtle accent lights that change a pattern. There's different patterns that you can have uh, when you turn the vehicle on and you can customize it. You can also buy additional ones in the app, which is pretty interesting. You can see the front end is kind of rounded and blunt. Um, kind of helps out with directing the airflow around the vehicle and it only opens up the grill shutters when cooling is needed. So that whole entire area is control, controlling the airflow there in the front. And then here on the side, you can see that gloss black portion goes around each wheel well. And man, is it a huge uh, section there. It makes the tires look small. <laughs> Upper portion of the side mirror is gloss black. The base of the doors has gloss black. And the doors go all the way to the bottom of the vehicle. And I'll show you why uh, in a few minutes. Then you see the pillars here. A lot of gloss black accents on the vehicle here on the side. And you see the overall profile shape. There's a lot of room in here on this design for a lot of room. It's a three row SUV. So even though it's not like a real tall vehicle, it's a good thing because it's such a heavy vehicle, the, the, it, it really needs to be low. Uh, there is a lot of room in there. It's pretty interesting how they designed it. This is what the key looks like, the key fob. You can see the buttons are here on the edge and it has a lot of functionality. Now it doesn't have a physical key on the inside. Uh, so the actual key is relatively light, rounded, easy to carry with you. It has a little bit of a bulk to it, um, but it has this little light right here, right there. So as you lock and unlock the doors, that little light flashes. It's kind of hard to tell during the day, but you can definitely see it at nighttime. So it has the ability to uh, lock, unlock, open up the power lift gate, panic button here. Uh, there's also remote start and then move the vehicle forward and back and then you can release uh, the front trunk there as well. Uh, so once you hit the lock button, remote start it by pressing and holding this button. Once it starts up, uh, you can mo move the vehicle forward and back using these buttons here on the edge. You do have to be kind of close to the vehicle. Uh, but Once you press and hold the button, it's gonna move forward, it takes a second, but it'll slowly move the vehicle forward. And you see there's nobody in the driver's seat. When, as soon as you let go, it'll stop. Press the back button if you wanna go back. You can press the back button and it will go back. And if there's anything in the way, like me, I'm holding the button, it'll stop because it uses the parking sensors. And when you're finished, uh, you can just, um, you know, you can turn off the remote start and once you do that, it'll put it in park and engage the parking brake. But it's really handy uh, at certain times. Now, if the front tires are turned in any way, it'll straighten them up first. It only goes forward and back straight. But it's handy if somebody parks too close to you or something in a parking spot, you can kind of move the vehicle uh, out of the parking spot enough to where you can get inside. Uh, you're not going very far with it. You have to stand really close to the vehicle, uh, but it can, you know, come in handy at times, especially just showing off to your friends. Uh, but the way that the key is designed, uh, I have it, I have it to where when you walk up to the vehicle, it'll pop the doors out, uh, pop the handles out right here. Now, sometimes, you know, if I go up to the vehicle like this, 
and then I don't open the door, um, then it'll relock. But then once I do that, I'll have to take the key out of my pocket and hit the unlock button. There's a little sensor right here that is supposed to lock and unlock the door. Um, but you know, sometimes it doesn't, doesn't work. I have I had a lot of scenarios in which I walk up to the vehicle and I have to use the key fob to unlock the door. Uh, so, or lock the door, you know, so it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, and I've had it sometimes it would work, sometimes it's not. But, uh, but that's supposed to be able to use the vehicle 100%. Now, if I just walk up and the, the handles pop up, I open, grab the handle, get inside and drive away. You know, I can turn it on, drive away. Uh, in that sense, it's fine. But there's certain little uh, quirkiness situations where, you know, I do have to take the key fob out and hit the unlock button. Try this side. You know, so I want to lock the door. There we go. So it worked that time. There we go. It's working. <laughs> Works when it wants to, I guess. It's like a rub it, push it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting situation. I'm not sure what's going on. But we'll go ahead and hit the unlock button. Uh, and then when we open up the door, you can see it goes all the way to the bottom of the vehicle, sealing up that entire threshold area, keeping it cleaner than it would otherwise be. So the inside, uh, it has this kind of gloss plastic in certain places. Kind of interesting. And then it has this uh, metallic portion right there that completely blends in with the door handle, door release handle. There's heated and cooled seat controls here for the passenger, three stage, which is nice. Door lock controls, power window control, and then there's this little pocket right here. And there's a larger, there's a, like a taller side and a more shallow side. And it's open here. It's a good thing because it'd be hard to, if you drop something in there, it'd be hard to get out without that. And then there's a large pocket there at the bottom. Really liking the speaker grill. It's part of the Meridian system. Sounds all right. Nothing really great. Now this is soft touch here, here, and then you have the hard touch surfaces at the bottom. This is a reflector. There's another speaker grill here, tweeter. Let me see that. There's a little sill plate there in the threshold. And check out all these seat controls here on the passenger side. Uh, so it has two-way lumbar adjustment, tilt the seat, raise and lower the seat, but also this little leg like a, like a little recliner, so it's lower leg support, which is pretty cool. These are heated and vented seats. Feel really nice and comfortable. Has a smooth uh, simulated leather here and perforations here. Bolstered, but not intrusive. And these headrests are really nice. It's kind of like a net, really comfortable. Head support, head restraint, however you want to say it. Uh, they are nice. Lots of leg room here in the front. Plenty of leg room. Little storage area there. I don't know if you can see the blue ambient light. You can see it during the day sometimes. This is a hard touch surface here. Non-locking glove compartment. But check how big this glove compartment is. It is massive. Felt lined right in here. And it has a shelf all the way back in there. So, yeah. <laughs> it goes way back in there way in there so pretty pretty interesting there the opening is kind of small but the the size inside is big okay so this is a soft touch here here and then you have the cloth right in there with the light around the outside looking nice it has a sunroof and then a glass roof there in the back the amount of space getting in and out of the first and second rows is great. Um, this is all open right here. You're not bumping your head. Uh, the seat is off the ground enough to where it's very easy to just hop in and out. Very nice. Swing of the door here on the front is good. Now the back door swing is great. It swings out out of the way and look how much room you have to get in and out of the back seats. Just a lot of room. 
once again you're not bumping your head or anything like that now the back doors do have these shades in addition to the privacy glass so you can release those and they extend down into the door there's heated and vented seats back here three stage very similar styling door as we saw in the front threshold is covered up by the door just like the front and this one has the captain's chairs here in the second row and they are very comfortable you can see the controls here do they have they have the full range up down forward back tilt the back as well as this reclining little footrest here now you have to pull the seat up in order to uh, really extend your feet out depending on how long your legs are but yeah these are really nice looking seats very comfortable the latch system for the car seats very easy to get to right there there's no covers or anything to get in the way it does have a armrest that comes down and then ratchets up and you get adjustable there in the center there's pockets on the back of both front seats now this is a hard touch surface here and then there's a cloth and this is basically just kind of like spring loaded but you're able to go in there and look see what's in there also this little it's like a bag holder right here on the back of the seat uh, so you can if you had like a strap or something or something that you can hang there you can do that there's also handles back here there's USB ports on the sides of each front seat here and here USB-C ports for the second row of passengers and I guess the I guess the front seat uh, people can use them too but it's mostly for back here cup holders same thing front and rear passengers can use them there is this little tray that pulls out you can utilize that kind of rubberized textured and has a cool light um, and kind of stays put but you can I guess it doesn't really lock um, it kind of like has like a little bump there that I guess if you hit the brakes it might slam forward because it doesn't feel like much pressure there uh, but this right here opens up this top part and then you have a large kind of storage bin here really easy to just fill it up and <laughs> turn into a junk drawer it goes way in there way in there and it has a felt lining in the bottom so yeah, this is just like a place to pile stuff, I guess. Not much storage options there as far as organizing it. But check it out, the floor is completely flat. I love the way these seats feel. That sy synthetic leather is nice. You can kind of slide right in place and look and feel nice. Uh, there is also climate control back here. Um, so you can turn it on, set the temperature, fan speed, where you want the air to blow. Uh, that kind of thing. I'll go ahead and turn that down. We can turn it off if you want to. You can see there's little climate control vents, kind of neat. There's lights here, little hook, handle. And then we have the rear glass um, back here as well. So, kind of helps out with claustrophobia, I guess. And now it's a power shade. So the people in the front have to use that button up there uh, to open and close the shade. So you're at the mercy of them. <laughs> so these seats actually have two additional functions um, to, as far as movement. Uh, the first thing you can do, there, there's a button right here. Here, there's also another button here for the third row passengers to push. They do the exact same thing. So basically you push that and it power power spoons itself there to the front seat to get out of the way and hope hopefully give you enough room to get to the third row so you can see there's the little path there and here's the third row now the third row is actually pretty decent it has uh both seats there's two seats back here and it has the latch system for car seats on both seats some vehicles kind of skimp out and only have it on one side uh, but there is a little storage compartments here, cup holders, USB charge ports or speakers back here, tap lights up here, climate control vents, and see the, the 
distance between the seat and the floor. Uh, the actual legroom is adjustable, but the, the height of the seat off the floor is pretty good. So, you know, somebody that's an adult, if you move these seats up a little bit, can sit back there without their knees sticking up in the air too far. So once again, all we have to do is push this button again, and the seat goes back to where it originally was. So it's a child friendly, basically a child can push this button. It actually doesn't go all the way back though, um, because it doesn't know if there's somebody in the back. So once you get it to this position, then you can uh, put it back where you want. Because if it goes all the way back and somebody's sitting back there and their knees are there, then you don't want that to happen. Um, so yeah, it puts you back in a, an upright position then you can adjust the seat from there. Now the second position is actually car, what I call cargo mode, where this back folds down flat so to add to your cargo space. You can't do it from here. You have to do it from the cargo area, which we'll get to in a second. The charge port is here on the passenger side, and you can push this little space right here. You press that, and basically what it does is it uses that little bump right there to press this button, which is pretty neat. But it's a power uh, deploying door. Uh, it does have a rubber seal here, but water can get in sometimes. Uh, so it has the regular charge port for charging at your house, and then it has the DC fast charger port here. And I like this little door, it's kind of neat. Uh, so right here is the button to close it. There's the status lights and then a light there to kind of help you find uh, at nighttime to plug it in and charge it. Push that to close it. The vehicle does have to be unlocked in order to open and close it. Also, uh, you can set it to where the, the, the actual charge connector cannot be released. It'll lock in there, or you can have it unlock. However, there's in the settings, there's different, different ways you can do it. So looking at the back of the vehicle, you can see it has the, uh, the gloss black roof rails, and then there is a body colored little shark fin antenna. The third brake light is here at the top of the glass. And just under that, there's two things. One is there is a rear wiper hidden under here. And another is the rear view camera. Now you notice this rear view camera is, if you can see that sun shining, uh, is not in the middle. It's kind of over here. It looks a little tacked on, um, but I can kind of understand why they did that because sometimes this rear view camera lens will be in this shark fin antenna, which is kind of hard to reach to clean. Sometimes it's in the glass right in here. Uh, but if you do that, it's not going to be, um, when the windshield wiper comes down, it's not going to wipe past it. So it seems like they just kind of put it there as it gets out of the way of the windshield wiper. It gives you a view behind the vehicle. And I'm not sure exactly why it's offset, but it seems to work well, so even though it's kind of hidden there, so it doesn't doesn't bother me as much uh, as other camera locations, I guess, especially the backup camera. So we have a smooth back end with that uh, hidden rear wiper out of the way. And then there's the gloss black everywhere back here as well. Uh, the backup camera, which is a separate camera lens, is down here, kind of tacked on. It is in the middle. Um, but I wish it was kind of more integrated in here in the middle somewhere else. But, you know, having it down next to the tag, I guess, is okay. Now, the taillights are an LED system. And pretty interesting. It kind of sprawls up on the pillars, on the tag, on the actual lift gate, and on the side of the vehicle. Uh, and then, of course, the turn signal, reverse lights, all that stuff's LED back here. Nice and sharp. Really neat looking. Uh, now, there's also parking sensors back here, just like the front. So opening up the power lift gate, we can of course use the key. Uh, there's also a button under here if you would like to use that. Press that button and it lifts up. And there is hard plastic under here. A little uh, physical release there in case you need that. If you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this is the amount of cargo space you have back here, which is not, not too bad actually. You know, it's 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 a decent spot. It's flat. Uh, this lifts up, and you'd have additional space under here. Now it has a tire and flighter kit instead of a spare tire. Something to definitely be aware of. 
Um, but it has a, here on the left side, it has a button for lowering, a separate button for lowering uh, the power lift gate. You have one already here, so if you can't reach it, um, you can use that button, I guess. 12 volt power supply, this is, this is 180 watts. Uh, there's some tie downs, you can put a net pocket back here if you want. It also has a power inverter, a 125 volt, 15 amp power inverter. So this will be like similar to what you have, I mean exactly, basically what you have in your house. Um, so you can use like a, a space heater, a uh, hair dryer, a coffee maker, pretty much anything you can plug into a household outlet, you can use this three prong power inverter for. So very impressive uh, having that on the vehicle. Now there's also the vehicle to load system, which you can actually plug in to the charge port and it will, has like a power inverter type system there in which you can have uh, this type of capability as well with the vehicle, you know, closed up. Uh, right in here is the, the manual release. Behind that is the manual release for this uh, power charge port door. Okay, so these seats. So if we, you notice that one seat is reclined, one seat's more forward. So you can, you know, adjust them a little bit if you want. Uh, you can also release them and push them all the way down, add to your cargo space, or, you know, have this one up, that one down, add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. Fold these down right here, and this is really nice, just wide open spot, the space, just really good, almost completely flat area back here. But now if we want to lower one of these seats, uh, we can do it using these buttons here. So I'm gonna press this button here to the right. And basically what it's gonna do is move it back and then fold it down. So if it's not moved back, then it's gonna hit the front seat. So if it's moved back, now we can fold it down into that cargo mode. But you see it's not exactly the same level. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a tilt up but not a big deal, you know. This adds a tremendous amount of additional space to your cargo space, and you can still have a passenger. Uh, you can still have, like say, this seat up, those seats down, that kind of thing, depending on your needs. Uh, when you fold them all down, you have a really wide open place back here. And it has a utility mode uh, to where, let's say you wanna put a mattress back here, put it in utility mode, uh, you can actually have the climate control, the vehicle on, and, uh, and you can sleep and camp in the vehicle and all that stuff. Pretty interesting. So you can fold the, you can move this uh, power lift gate down. Now I showed you the button over there. It's kind of odd, I hadn't seen that before, having a separate button there, but there's actually two buttons here. One to just lower the power lift gate, the second one is to lower the power lift gate and then lock the vehicle. So if you have the, your groceries out and you're ready to go inside, you can just hit that one button, walk away, it closes us down, locks the vehicle, secures it, and you're ready to go. But I'm just gonna press that button there. See it comes down kind of slow, but still gotta watch out for fingers and stuff. Starting it up, uh, it's real easy. When you get inside the vehicle with the key, you just press and hold the brake. And you see right in here, really like this, um, this shifter and the power button. You just press that button right here. Press that button and it starts it up and then you're ready to drive. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You notice the floor mat hooks in place, has a sporty accelerator, brake pedal, footrest. You notice the little plus and minuses here on the, on the, on the pedals, that's kind of neat. So opening up the front trunk, uh, there's a button right here. There's a physical release under this cover. Uh, there's a electronic button here. You just press it twice here. One, two. You can also use the key as well. And it releases the front trunk. Once you release the front trunk, you simply just lift up on the hood. You don't have to uh, any, do any kind of releasing or anything like that. You see there's insulation here. And you can uh, fill up the washer fluid there. Coolant fluid is there if you need it. This is for your air conditioner, check that. And then you can check your brake fluid here. Uh, but this open compartment here is just, I mean, it's not huge, but it is pretty handy. Uh, this is the, this has the, the charge cable comes with is a 110. Uh, can be useful in certain situations, just super, super duper slow. This is the vehicle to load uh, inverter that plugs into uh, the charge connection location. 
and basically gives you a 110 outlet. Once you plug it in, you have access to this outlet right here, and it is 15 amps once again. Uh, but this gives you the ability to access the outlet outside the vehicle with the vehicle uh, enclosed. And then you can close this up and it'd be pretty much weatherproof. Uh, so even in a storm or something or you know rain or whatever, uh, you can use this. And it kind of tilts down a little bit, keep rain from uh, going in there. So this compartment, it kind of goes down there. There's a light, it goes in here on the bottom. Uh, kind of rubberized at the bottom, a little bit rubbery. These rubber pieces can come out and clean it, put it back in. Uh, same thing here, take this out. This is where you access uh, the 12 volt uh, battery under here as well. So you can access that right there. It's pretty easy. It's gonna take your junk out. And then the cabin fil filter is behind this cover here. You can access your cabin filter. So that's pretty straightforward. And of course you can put some junk in here. Now this right here is a emergency release. You just have to know to open it and push it. Um, so I don't know how child friendly that is, but uh, if a small child were to get in here, you know, I guess they can figure out how to open that up maybe, hopefully, in the dark. Me personally, I'd probably just take that cover off if I had, if I suspected that might be a problem, I would take this cover off like that so they can just, this can be taken off and then that way they all have to do is press that nest glow in the dark. The blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert indicator is here on the side mirror. These are also auto dim and heated side mirrors as well. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. You see that cloth is looking nice. So we have the heated steering wheel controls here. It's a two-stage heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seat two presets for the power seat. Uh, there's also a massage function. You just press that to initiate it and you can press and cycle through different ones that you want. You just rest on the one that you want. Uh, the, the, here's the power window lockout there so you, so you don't have kids playing around with it. Power windows here, they're one touch up and down. They are laminated glass here on the front. Rear glass comes down all the way, goes all the way down. And one touch up and down once again. Door lock controls, side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side and then you can adjust it with this little pad. And then the center part is to power fold the side mirrors. So you can power fold them in, in and out. But they go pretty rapid. Power seat here on the passenger side, very similar to the other side, uh, except for it has um, bolster adjustments. So this right in here will be adjusted in and out four-way lumbar adjustments and then you have this button for the reclining uh, seat so basically if you're in a charging area and you just want to get comfortable uh, you can use this to recline the seat you see it's going into the full recline mode lifting this up lifting that whole thing up like so and kind of put you in a reclining position basically definitely not going to drive like this but this is uh this is a good nice comfortable spot to take a nap if you're charging and you got a slow charger or something to the left of the steering column uh, this is where you can another way of opening up the charge port Front trunk, we saw that. This is to open up. You push that and hold it to open up the power lift gate. Traction control off. Default will be on. If you need to spin tires for whatever reason, you can turn it off here. Dimmer switch for the interior gauges. I show that in the night video. Um, it goes, it adjusts a lot of different things besides the gauges. Electronic parking brake. Now this vehicle will engage the electronic parking brake when you put it in park. Uh, but if you need to, you know, take it on or off manually, you can do that here. And then there is a tilt telescoping powered steering column. The heads up display is actually pretty good. Uh, what's interesting about this one, it's very similar to other Hyundai Kia uh, heads up displays, but it has little lines. When you turn on the lane keep assist, the little lines move showing you the direction of the road. It's kind of neat. And it also shows you the relative position you are, the vehicle is in your lane. So as you move left to right in the lane, it'll show you that as well. 
Uh, pretty interesting. It also shows you the navigation, turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions, the speedometer, of course, but also if there's a vehicle in front of you, it gives you that information. It also shows you the last speed limit sign it passed. So yeah, and it, it's, it's bright enough. Uh, you can see it pretty good. It's relatively sharp. It's not blurry. It's not distracting. So I think the heads-up display is fine. It's, it's really good. I'm sitting in the driver's seat, and I have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea what the potential legroom here is. And it's actually pretty good. Um, you can see there's lots of room here to the left, to the right of my knees. Um, this is a little bit too far back for me to drive. I'd probably pull it up a little bit more um, to, in order to press the brake pedal all the way down, that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, if you're a little bit over six feet tall, you should have no problem uh, driving this vehicle comfortably. And there's lots of adjustments. There's even a... A, uh, th there's even a massage function here, heated and cooled seats and, and all that stuff. Steering wheel is also heated. It's a two-stage heated steering wheel. That's really nice. Uh, some heated steering wheels just get a little bit too hot, so the ability to have it on low or high uh, is nice. Uh, this steering wheel is great. It has, where it's soft, it's very soft, <laughs> but then it has this hard plastic. That's the only thing. It's like this hard plastic right in here. It's kind of like a glossy surface to it. If it was a different color, maybe it'd look better. It kind of blends in a little bit too much. A little bit of a contrast would be nice. Maybe, I don't know, but uh, but yeah, the soft surfaces are really nice, really comfortable. And, and the fact that it's like a flat top and flat bottom looks kind of neat. This Kia badge is also illuminated. Um, now it has the, the paddle shifters on the back and this is for the regen to adjust the different regen you can have three different automatic functions you can also have level one level two uh level three and also the um i pedal which is basically the one pedal drive system which is you know a lot of people love that now the buttons here on the steering wheel here on the right side is the volume for the radio little scroll wheel there change the audio track voice recognition uh, it also has to change through the tracks, you know, whatever you're playing, uh, whether it be radio stations, presets, or, um, you know, USB songs, or whatever you got going on there. That's to go up and down for the radio system. Uh, one button for answering and hanging up. So somebody calls you, press that button to, hang, to answer, press it again to hang up. And then this is a button that you can customize. Here on the left side, um, now it has the cruise control, so one button to turn on the cruise control, which is nice. So you turn it on and set it all in one one press, uh, and then you can go uh, change the speeds there, up and down. Press in on this button to pause and resume. Set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Turn on the lane keep assist system. Uh, and then this little pages button, and scroll wheel and OK button, uh, that corresponds with the screen, which I'll get that in a second. There is the windshield wiper controls for the front and rear, and it has the rain sensing system as well. Here on the left side is the turn signal, but also has the headlight switch. So it's off, auto, parking lights, and headlights. And I do have a full night video on this vehicle as well. Uh, the automatic high beams actually work pretty good. A little spoiler there. Okay, so this screen is the gauges, and it's relatively minimized, uh, like a minimal type system. There's not a lot of customization here for a screen. Now, um, it does show the digital speedometer, last speed limit sign uh, that you passed, your range, uh, the actual battery percentage, and then this is the status of your regen. Uh, this is the odometer here, outside temperature, and the status of the vehicle. It's ready to drive. Parking brake, uh, brake is on right now because we're, we have the vehicle in the park. Now, you can see right in the center, there's, this is showing the status of where the power is going from the system to the front and rear wheels and it'll give you a little status bar as you're driving. Most of the time, unless you're really flooring it, it's gonna be the rear wheels. Uh, if you really floor it, it's gonna engage the front wheels, um, but that's the way the system works. Now it does have the four wheel drive lock here. It also has the different drive modes. So as I hit the four wheel drive, uh, or the drive modes, you can see it cycles through. My drive is basically one that you can customize. Snow mode, eco, normal, and sport. Now, normal mode is actually pretty good. Uh, sport does give a, you know, it does give you more responsiveness and stuff like that. But if you really floor it in, in normal mode, it, it's still pretty good. I mean, it's not weak. Eco isn't even that weak, really, uh, for flooring it, as it is for normal driving. It's a little bit weaker than my preference anyway. But if I need extra range, it definitely does help. Uh, but using these buttons here, there's a pages button, a little scroll wheel right there. Uh, if I hit the pages buttons, I'm going to press it in one, two, three. One, two, three. You can see the little bars at the bottom. 
showing you those are the different options here. The first one here, you can rest on that one. You can scroll up and down. This is more like vehicle information. Um, so it shows different trips, different uh, the status of, you know, like how much energy you're using, that kind of thing. Tire pressure, and it goes back to that. The next one is whatever. If you have a route set on the navigation, it'll show more information here. Right now it's just showing a compass. Uh, the next one will be your uh, driving aid system. So this would be your status of your line keep assist or there's, if there's vehicles in front of you. And then you can press and hold this button here uh, to enter in uh, basically a shortcut over here to the settings, which is in the settings on the screen anyway, but it's just like a quick way of uh, accessing the different uh, settings here, turning on and off different features. Also under the settings, you have screen layout and it has three different ones. So you can see link to drive mode, style B, style C. Now, if you go right here, and I'll, it's in style A, go style B, style C. Notice there's not a huge difference. It's just a slight change in the little status bars there, but it's not a huge difference. So I would like, I mean, it would be kind of cool if it had, uh, you know, more functionality to the screen, more customization. You know, like, sort of like the Kia, uh, the Kia Sportage has a really nice screen. You can have like an image in the background and all that stuff. This one just seems kind of plain, I guess. Um, now it's functional and everything, but, you know, you'd think it would be, you know, a little bit, a little bit more customizable since it's just a screen, you know, they could just have, it's almost fixed almost, you know. So right in here, you notice there's a screen here, there's a screen here, but right here in the center, is for the climate control. And it's a little bit obscured by the steering wheel. Uh, but if you hit this plus button, it pops it out on this side and you can do all the adjustments. And has a really cool imagery there. You can always make it go back down as well. Uh, there's also physical buttons down here for temperature, fan speed, where you want the air to blow and a passenger side temperature. So it is kind of like, you're just kind of filling the gap, but uh, it's not as functional as you would think because you do kind of have to lean over to see it. Uh, but it works fine because you can always, you can see that plus and you can hit that plus and it brings it over to the main screen. And then that's really rapid. And almost everything you're gonna control is down here anyway. So it's just kind of more of a static uh, controls there, but it is, can be, you know, functional as well. So this main touch screen here, um, it has these like physical buttons down here. Now they're haptic. When you press this button, it kind of like has a little sound to it. Uh, the only thing is I accidentally press these all the time when I'm trying to interact with the screen. But, uh, you know, it is, you just once, I'm sure once I got used to them, they'd be fine. Because you basically want to rest your hand while you're pressing the screen so you're not like bouncing around or whatever. Especially if you're driving and you want to hit a button, you reach over and then you're like hit a button and then you missed a button. So if you rest your hand there to press the button, it's better. But since there's buttons there, you accidentally hit those buttons instead. Okay, so there's the home screen here. And it's a split between right now the navigation map, whatever the radio is doing, and then you can quickly go to your EV setting. Now you can customize this if you want. Uh, you can also pull down from the top and then you can customize this little quick control. Uh, different uh, passenger talk is really good for talking to the passengers because it projects your voice to the sound system. So you don't have to holler at everybody. <laughs> Make it sound like you're mad. You can also set up different driver profiles here as well. Um, so the navigation map here, you could do searches here. Uh, pretty straightforward as far as that goes. And then the radio, you have different audio sources. It does have sounds of nature, which is kind of neat. And then your different um, channels here has album art as well. The album art and stuff goes on the heads up display, which is pretty cool too. All right, and the next one is, this is very important. You definitely have to use this regularly or at least set it up uh, when you first get the vehicle. So the EVs, um, the EV page, I guess you could say, or option, uh, this just shows you the status of the battery, how far it is to the next charge port. Now this just shows like a regular, you know, slow charger. So I wouldn't, it's not like it's going to separate fast chargers and all that stuff. But if you hit this button, it shows on a map, uh, your actual range from where you are and how far you can go. So you can see I'm right here. So it's showing I can drive within that range, giving the battery um, percentage that I have. So it's pretty far. It's almost like, you know, to Virginia there and stuff like that. 
All right, let's go back here. Now there's different settings here as well. You can have this information, that information. You can swipe here to the right, get the more information here. You can also condition the battery on your way. If it's really cold, you can condition the battery before you go to a tr fast charger and you get better charging speeds. It shows your, you know, what you're using basically. Your charge settings as well. Your departure time. AC charger settings, charging limit, and then your vehicle to load, um, how much you're going to use before it turns it off, or how low your battery is. You, there's your battery conditioning, there's the utility mode I was talking about, and then your smart regen, which is your basically your automatic function over here, um, you can go ahead and set that slower, normal, or faster. Uh, start The voice alert is like charging started, you can have that on there as well, They're like a voice outside of the vehicle. Um, so yeah, setting that up, your EV stuff, is very important when you f first get the vehicle. And you can go in there and customize it the way you want. Uh, pair your phones here and access to that as well. Uh, your phone projection, which would be Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can get a voice memo. You just hit that button and you can speak in speak in the vehicle and just kind of, you know, have a, a recorded voice memo. You know, it's really handy. Uh, seats. This is information about the uh, second row seats. The heated and cooled part, driver and passenger here. You can also adjust the seats as well. And then you can fold the seats from this position instead of the, all the way in the back. Uh, you can get weather here. And then there's your setup. You can also go to setup here. Navigation, EV, um, the EV is basically with the screen we already saw, heads up display adjustments, uh, your screen layout, which we saw that over here, um, your display settings like brightness and stuff like that, different user profiles, and then general settings will be about the software and stuff. The next one will be your valet mode, vehicle diagnostics, maintenance, HD radio data, notifications here, and an online manual. Online manual, when you hit that, all it does is just take you to a uh, QR code, so it's not really actually a manual, it's just a link to a manual. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting system. Um, it, it works well. This is new. You know, they kind of tweaked their system for 2024 for the Kia, Hyundai vehicles, Genesis, uh, that kind of thing. So most of them are going to be like this. And of course, you have the you know buttons down here to quickly go to stuff, so you don't have to go to every screen to get to certain things. Here's a volume knob, so you can adjust the volume there. Press in to mute. Press again to, or adjust it up or down uh, to initiate it again. Temperature, fan speed, where you want the air to blow. Temperature for the passenger. Four-way flashers are here. Down here is the connectivity to the system and also a charge port. So you have USB. Uh, right here. So this is, I like, I love this feature. Um, the And I saw this in the Santa Fe as well, Hyundai Santa Fe, where you can, in Sonata, <laughs> uh, so you can turn on this to where it's just a charge port, or you can have it charge and connect with the system. And you see it changes colors there. Because uh, sometimes when you plug in your device, you don't want it to connect with the system. It kind of forces you to start this process of connecting to the system and all that stuff, and you don't want to do that, you just want to charge the device, uh, you can do that. You separate it um, right there with that button. This other one is just charging, and then there's a 12 volt power supply here. And it's kind of hidden away, which looks good. And you see that large pocket there at the bottom. You put a bag or whatever, box of tissues, whatever you want to put there. I love this ambient light, it looks really good at night. You gotta check out my night video. Uh, so this is kind of like a roll-top desk, kind of rubbery soft here, opens up. And you have this space here, which you can also have cup holders that pop out. There's a small one, there's a large one, rubberized floor in the bottom as well. Here's a fingerprint reader if you want to use your fingerprint to start the vehicle. And uh, it has like a, a white status light when you when the vehicle's off, and then it'll uh, turn blue when the vehicle's, uh, when it's initiated. Or red, I think it's red if you keep trying it, it'll lock you it out. I think it's five or six times of trying it and not using your, you know, it'll basically lock you out. You have to use the key. 
All right, so uh, auto hold feature will hold the vehicle, keep it from rolling when you come to a complete stop. You just hit the accelerator to continue. This is a downhill descent for off-road, mostly control, uh, uh, slippery surfaces, that kind of thing. And then, you know, once you have the four-wheel drive lock system, uh, it will basically have the front and rear wheels drive together. And then, you know, this is another off-road type system that works great. Parking sensors are uh, initiated here. So you can turn them off if you want. Uh, and then I like to have, like the way that it has a status light that they're on now, not an off light. <laughs> um, and then right here, this, this, this camera system is fantastic. So there's actually several different ways you can use, use the camera system. So, um, let's back up a little bit because when you put the turn signal on, there is a blind spot camera that pops up. There's the right, there's the left. So as you're driving, you can see right in your blind spot. And we still have the digital speedometer there. Just overlays it on the camera. This button, excellent. Press that button. It pops up here on the screen. Uh, right now it's showing the front view. We can have a top down view. Side views, you can see the front wheels there. As I turn the steering wheel, you can see the wheels moving. So we can see right where we are in relationship to say curbs and stuff. And then a front really wide view here. So there's kind of like the default view and then the top down uh, stitched together 360 camera system there. Uh, we can also press this button and get like a view around the vehicle. You see that there's a car back there. You can see where I'm at in relationship to other things. It's kind of neat. And uh, so you can also, if I put it in reverse, it's going to show this. The backup camera and you can see the active guidelines there you can see guidelines there as well as i turn the steering wheel um, and as i move the vehicle you can see it shows where we are in relationship to other things in real time go forward so yeah really cool uh very handy camera system Let's go back again. So yeah. So if you put it in reverse, it's going to quickly go into reverse. Um, it's going to go into the backup camera, even if you're in the front camera. Now the shifter is right here. We saw the we saw the uh, the power button, the, the, the power button, basically start button, and it's on this stock right here. And it's I guess it can get you have to kind of get used to it for the average person. I guess it's a, it's kind of different. But I really like it. I like the fact that they moved the power button there because might as well use this stock since it's completely out of the way for as much as possible, you know? So it's really easy to just start the vehicle there. And then to turn it, put it in reverse, you just tilt this back. And then you can see the reverse, the backup parking sensors are initiated, cameras initiated, all that stuff. And it gives you visuals here on the screen if there's something close to your vehicle there and there. And also beeps if it's kind of close. Um, and then forward, like so, you just push it, put, try to tilt this forward. Now we have the camera going forward. Still have the parking sensors. And then if we want to put it in park, press right here on the end. And then it puts the vehicle in park and initiates the uh, parking brake, electronic parking brake, which is engages the rear wheels. So yeah, um, it's a little bit out of the way, but man, is it so easy to use. Like it took me 30 seconds to figure it out and how to use it. And uh, I really like this system. I'm glad they, they went with it. Okay, so I like this button here. Now, the only thing I would say I add is um, Toyotas have the ability to, Toyotas and Lexus have the ability to have that turn on automatically when you get below five miles an hour. Uh, that would be nice to have so you don't have to push the button. Let's say you're, you want to nail the parking spot. Um, you can just quickly press that button, but having it to just automatically turns on every time you're going forward. Um, and you go below five miles an hour, it's kind of handy to have that camera system pop up. And I wish that had that, at least that option, you know. Some people like it, some people don't. So right here is a charge port here, or a charge wireless charger. So I put my phone there. Even with the case, it's able to recognize it and charge it. And there's a little status light showing that it's charging. And I hadn't had any problem with this charger. Uh, some wireless chargers, I put my phone there and it charges and then it starts blinking and then, and then you know, I get to my destination and my phone is dead because it wasn't charging the whole time. 
Uh, but this one has no problem. There's also a little place right here to put the key. You rest the key there. If the battery is, the actual battery inside the key fob is not working properly, um, you can uh, initiate the immob immobilizer system by placing the key there. Uh, get past it. Okay, so there we saw those cup holders back there. This is a soft touch, kind of rubbery soft armrest here. Uh, not really big enough to share with the passenger, but uh, it's it's okay. Now this opens up and you can see the rest of the little charger there. But right in here is like the tiniest little, uh, it's like the tiniest little uh, compartment. It has a little felt lining in it. But, you know, I can put my business cards in there. And uh, that's about it. Not a whole lot of stuff there. Um, now that huge drawer compartment is nice, but that's more for the rear passenger. So now you do have this huge compartment here, but that's you know, kind of down on the floor, not easy to reach, especially this is being in the way. So that's kind of interesting. As long as you're aware of it, you can adapt to it. And you can see these buttons right here. So you can move this and move this. Comes in handy. So just, I can quickly move it here. Also, we saw how we can move it on the screen and just the uh, the different seats here from the driver position. Pretty cool. We have a rear view mirror, an actual rear view mirror, auto dimming as well. We also have the rear view camera, which we can, uh, it's dimming right now because I have this shade over the light sensor, uh, but it is is excellent. Really nice to have. Once you have these rear view camera systems, it's, it's hard to go to a regular mirror. Uh, you can adjust the uh, brightness and tilt and all that stuff here as well. And then the home link garage door opener controls are here on the left side. Uh, we have some quick reading lights here. Here, we can turn on all the enter lights by pressing that button. These are soft touch buttons. Uh, you can have the interior lights not turn on when you open the door by pressing that. That's an off light. <laughs> and roadside assistance here as well. Uh, there's for the sunroof. That's for the rear shade. Get to that in a minute. Uh, the headliner is like a sim simulated suede material. Same thing with the visor. Visors are that material as well. It has a little clip there. Big mirror with a light that turns on. It also extends out as well. Very soft and plush feeling. But same thing on the other visor. Okay, so um, that rear... You see that rear glass back there. Let's go ahead and close the shade. We'll use that button and close the shade. So you can see it blocks 100% of the light. And the same thing here, but this is a manual shade. It blocks 100% of the light. Uh, let's go ahead and tilt it. Close it. Now we'll move it back. Press it again. All right, as far back as it goes. close it like so and this is also that suede material as well so looking at the visibility I have some of the seats down some of the seats up so you can see how they affect the visibility there's lots of windows back there there's a large fairly large pillar in the back but overall it's not really a big deal I mean looking over your shoulder looking out the rear view mirror especially rear view camera um, haven't had any problems with blind spots or anything it does have the camera system the blind spot detection system rear cross traffic alert um, the rear view camera, the, I mean, there's just so much, so much technology to help you drive the vehicle. So, you know, even though there is a wide pillar back there, it hasn't really been an issue. I think it's overall actually pretty good. I've seen a lot worse than that. One of the things I noticed with this vehicle, as soon as I started driving it, was the stiffness in the steering. Uh, the steering is a little bit stiff and you can't, adjust it in the system. Now it has a stiffer setting apparently for the sport mode or the sport setting on the uh, on my drive mode uh, but as it is the the, the lightest setting is kind of you know kind of stiff it has like a sporty feel so some people like that. In my case I would prefer to have the option to lighten it up a little bit but you know once you get used to it it's not a big deal it's not hard to turn or anything but it just feels a little stiff. And this one has all cameras everywhere. You know, you have the surround view camera over here. Uh, you have the turn signal blind spot cameras left and right. And you also have the rear view camera, which is excellent. Uh, so all these cameras really help out 
when you need them. So this one here, especially if you have people in the back seats and stuff like that, uh, or cargo back there, it's gonna get obscured. But the fact that you can, the, the regular mirror will get obscured. Uh, but the camera is located behind the vehicle and it gives you a clear view behind the vehicle. Now it's not in the perfect center position, but, but the way they have the wiper uh, swing down, I think that's the reason why. And you can kind of understand what the purpose, you know, why they put it where they did. Now you will have to uh, wipe it and clean it. You have to keep it clean. Same thing with the, all the cameras, uh, but the camera lenses. But um, the, the lens itself, a lot of them will have them in the glass and the windshield wiper will wipe past them and clean them for you. Uh, but since the wiper swings down, it just doesn't, you know, work with doing that. So in this case, it's, you know, it's in a position that's easy to reach and uh, it works okay. Now the acceleration is great, you know, uh, but it, there's a big difference between regular normal drive mode, eco mode, and sport mode. So when you hit the drive mode here, I'm glad that they have it right here. It's easy to get to uh, because sometimes you just, you know, you want to put it in sport mode. You want to accelerate fast and be able to get to it quickly and then switch back. Uh, it is great. And eco mode is kind of sluggish for me. I prefer to have at least the normal. And the normal is not really punchy because we have a heavy vehicle. So, you know, they don't really want you to drive it like a race car because it's really going to diminish your range because you're trying to accelerate a heavy vehicle all the time fast which it can do no problem in sport mode um but you know of course it's not really designed to be like whiplashing your family while you're driving around so the normal mode is uh i can understand why it's diminished as much as it is now i notice when i accelerate uh, in sport mode when I just go like from a dead stop and, and just floor it It'll use all the power for the whole all-wheel drive system all at once And I do feel a little bit of torque steer in the front wheels when it does that. It's not a lot You know, it's not noticeable. It's not like a, a Big deal or anything. I just want to mention it does have that so you want to make sure you hold the steering wheel uh, Tight when you're accelerating especially if you're going around curves or something like that if you're really accelerating hard then you know you will experience a little bit of torque steer or at least I did um, and that's that's very rare because I don't know if you can see the the normal driving is mostly for the rear wheels and it only kind of kicks in the front wheels when it needs it which is great you know it's a good system to uh, you know rear wheel drive is pushing the vehicle for some reason it just feels more natural um, for me anyway now the cruise control system, I like the way that when you initiate it, you just press this one button, it turns the cruise control on and it sets it at the same time. You know, so there's not like multiple steps trying to get the cruise control on. Now there is a button here that you do have to push separately to turn on the lane keeping assist system. And it does a pretty good job. It's a little bit intrusive, you know, kind of struggles. It kind of fights with you, okay? so. Basically, if you let go and, mo and just kind of rest your hand, it kind of works better. Because if you're trying to kind of hold it like you're steering, it kind of fights with you. Now, it doesn't always see the lines on the road, which is very interesting because the lines are, you know, sometimes clearly marked and are right there. Uh, but yet, it doesn't see the lines. Um, so, that it kind of goes in and out as far as seeing, especially on curves, curves like right now. Uh, see if it does it. It's not doing it. But, um, so sometimes it does it, sometimes it, it doesn't. So the heads-up display is pretty cool because you actually see the little lines curving and stuff like that. It's pretty neat uh, when you turn on the lane keep assist system. Another thing about it is it has the, the grip sensors. So just resting your hand on the steering wheel, it knows that you're holding the steering wheel and it doesn't bug you, you know. Um, but, go ahead and resume here. But, um, so yeah, so if you do want to just kind of gently rest your hand on the steering wheel and don't fight with the system, uh, you can do that. And it, and it does a pretty decent job for most of the time. I have it in sport mode, just gonna accelerate. So it didn't take long to get up to speed. Let's put it in normal. All right. 
right? Once again, doesn't take much difference. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's much difference when you really floor it between normal and sport. Uh, you do notice a difference when you're just driving normally. And it uses the all-wheel drive system, and you do feel a little bit of torque steer, uh, you know, when you're not going completely straight, uh, because it engages the front wheels as, you know, maximum, basically. Now I have it in eco mode. So there's quite a bit less uh, acceleration. Also, it doesn't fully maximize the front wheels. It almost does, it's like three quarters of the way, but it's mostly the rear wheels. But it still has plenty of acceleration, even in eco mode when you floor it. The regen braking has several adjustments here. Now, in prior uh, Kia and uh, Hyundai vehicles, they had the paddle shifters in which you can go to different levels. This one, including an automatic. This one has an automatic. Uh, and the levels and everything, including iPedal, but the automatic has different levels. So you have a low, medium, you can, you can increase the automatic and get a larger percentage of regen out of the automatic function. Now, if you press and hold the right one, it goes into the levels. So it, is, it stays strict, it doesn't vary. Um, in the automatic, it kind of varies depending on what you want. But, um, but, it, but it depends on how you're driving, basically. But the, the strict level one, level two, and eye pedal uh, stays in that level of regen. Uh, and then the eye pedal max, basically without touching the brake, will come to a complete stop. So I hadn't touched the brake and I'm at a complete stop now. So that's the maximum regen. Now that's something you don't want to use on the highway because every time you let off the pedal, uh, it's going to just kind of slow you down a lot. So a lot of the inertia that you would normally maintain, uh, you're losing uh, by doing that. And the regen isn't like, you know, doing a lot of recharging. It does help, but you're better off maintaining your, your, your momentum than to lose it, especially when you're traveling, you know, on an open road or something. Uh, but if you're doing like stop and go traffic and stuff like that, it could be handy uh, in the city environment. Um, and also... The different levels of regen will be handy going down long hills. You know, sometimes you're you know, coming down the mountain or whatever, and there's like this long downgrade. And it's not very steep necessarily, but it's a long just downhill downgrade. And being able to use a little bit of that regen uh, at times to keep you from going too fast helps recharge the battery a whole lot because it's a long downward, uh, you're using you know, gravity to re basically recharge uh, the battery. So that's pretty neat. So yeah, the, the regen system is high, is very customizable to your liking. And some people just really like to, that, to just drive all the time with the, the iPedal type system. And, um, and so this has that capability. When it's plugged in, uh, it'll automatically pop up here on the screen how long it takes to finish the charge uh, and then your range currently and a just basically a percentage. Now if you turn the vehicle on, so it says unplug the vehicle to start. So in other words, it's not going to let you drive away when it's plugged in, uh, but we can go here. We can go here to the EV option and it gives us some more information here and it shows the charge rate. Now I have it set a little bit low, so it's like 36 amps. It can go up to 40 amps with my system, uh, but I have it a little bit lower because it doesn't really need to have the fastest charging. Um, so in order to do that, we have these different settings here and we have the departure time in which we can tell the vehicle to get everything ready. So like if you leave for work at say 7.30 in the morning, um, then you can set it up to for like 7.25 to go ahead and start the vehicle, get the temperature and all that stuff set up for you. And then the AC charger, see I have the charging current set to 90%. In the past it was like low, medium, hot and full. Now it's like 90%, 100% and then 60%. So I have it set to 90, which is just a little bit below um, 
the, the full charge rate, which would be 40 amps. So it's right there around 36 amps right now. We can change it down to 60%. And, and then this brings it down to 5.6 kilowatt kilowatts of charging. 90 is 8.3 and then 100 is 9.2 kilowatts of charging. So it'll be quite fast, quite a bit faster uh, to charge at that rate. Uh, but in my system, I prefer to have it 90% in this particular case. Uh, so you can also set it up to where it says charging connector locking mode. Uh, you can have it to where it's always locked while charging or do not lock. So while charging, when it's finished charging, it'll just, it'll allow you to, you know, unlock it and take it out always locked even when it's finished charging it's going to stay locked in there uh, or you can have it just do not lock um, now I, I prefer to have it while charging because you can unlock the vehicle you can still you know take out the charger when you want to uh, but you know it allows you without the key somebody else can just come along and take it out as easy all right and then the charging limit so this will be the total charge uh, limit on the total charge so right now I have the DC charger, which is the fast charger, uh, has 80% maximum. AC charge, I have it at 90% maximum. Now, you know, like, I could bring that down to 80%. It depends on, on your needs, uh, the AC charger. So if you're charging every single day, 80% um, 80, 80 will probably be good for most people. But if you need to go on a trip or something, it's no problem going and bumping it up even to 100%. As long as you're driving the vehicle immediately, uh, after it's charged and then you're going on the trip it's not a big deal to go ahead and charge it to 100 percent. but just daily driving you're not it, unless you're going to be driving hundreds of miles uh, that day you want to just go ahead and limit that a little bit lower for health of the battery longevity of the battery uh, and then this would be the vehicle to load uh, based, so basically the uh, the ac inverter system and you can set it to where it'll stop allowing you to use electricity at a certain point when the battery gets down to a certain point so in this case it's like 40 49 miles 20 percent and uh so that's pretty low i mean me personally i'd bring it up you know to maybe like 30 or 40 percent depending on how far away i am from home that kind of thing and then you have the separate uh the separate settings here in the past um kia had these together but um, so the battery conditioning, so this would be if you're on the way to go uh, fast charging, you can go ahead and turn this on so it'll warm up the battery or whatever, cool the battery, however, I think it's no normally warming no matter what, uh, to get to a certain temperature in order to charge, get the fastest charging you can out of the charging system. Uh, utility mode, if you're camping or something like that, you can use utility mode to keep the vehicle, uh, the climate control and everything on. Uh, for a long period of time without it turning off automatically. Smart regen. Uh, so this will be, I per, I mean, on the uh, the regen braking with the paddle shifters, um, I like the automatic mode, and you can adjust that here. So you have the slower, normal deceleration, or faster deceleration. Uh, and this is a little bit different than, say, you know, the, the eye pedal and stuff like that. This is just like a... Uh, a subtle um, difference there in the automatic function. So I'm going to go to smower, slower, smooth uh, deceleration. Charging started voice. So I have that turned off because literally it's just like a loud voice outside the vehicle and it's like charging has started and lets you, you know, like your whole neighborhood uh, can hear a voice, you know, from coming from your car. So I turn that off. Um, I don't really see much need in it unless you're you know, for unless you like it or whatever, you can do that. Uh, so there's the different settings there. Um, you can see that right here, different views here, electricity use, EV range history. Okay, so EV uh, economy. So I haven't started the vehicle yet. Said I hadn't driven it, so it's not given any range history there. All right, so let's go back and then back to the EV. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically the, the different settings that you'll have and the different information you'll have when you're charging at home. Um, charging, of course, at a DC fast charger, you're going to have much higher, uh, kilowatt rate and it's going to be, you know, 
a, a different experience, which we'll, I'll show you that soon. I've been charging to 90% at home before I leave. And let's go through the drive modes here. So Sport gives us an estimated range of 246. My drive is 254, which I'm not really sure how that's set up. Uh, let's go to Eco 261. Okay, for 90%. That's not bad. And then normal is 254, which is not that much difference. And the normal is much faster and much more responsive driving. And then the Sport uh, gives a little bit less, but that's much more responsive. So I'm at a DC fast charger now. Definitely want to check it, make sure there's no issues here with the connection before you plug it in. Okay, so after resetting my password and going through the app and all that stuff, I was able to get it to start charging. Now I did do the battery reconditioning or the battery conditioning on the way here for about 20 minutes or so. So we'll see how fast it's able to charge now. So right now, it's charging pretty slow, 54 kilowatts. I've been at the same charger with another vehicle and it charged really fast. It was like 130, so I'm not sure why it's slow right now. Uh, I conditioned the battery and everything, so maybe it'll ramp up here in a second. Maybe the charger has to warm up or something like that. But it's showing 40 minutes uh, to get to 80%. That's a long time at the, with this slow speed. So I've waited a little while and we're still at 54 kilo, kilowatts. So uh, it's like slow crawling. Uh, so at this point, I would probably move to a different charger if I needed the miles. I'm just demonstrating the vehicle. So I'm not gonna sit here all day uh, another 26 minutes because I don't really need all these miles. But uh, for some reason, this particular charger is charging slow. But, uh, but you can find this vehicle should charge very fast, you know. Um, the last Hyundai Kia vehicle I brought here was, you know, 130, 140 kilowatts, no problem. So I'm not sure what's going on with it today, but just to give you an idea of how to charge it, it's not that hard. You just have to get through the app, uh, depending on the charge station. You make sure you have the app, make sure you're logged in, make sure you have a um, credit card on file or whatever, and you just plug it in and hit start charge takes you like a minute or so and then it'll start charging so it's not really hard uh, but the this particular day I guess or this charge station is just not going as fast as it could 